Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today I found a potato hidden in the back of my kitchen counter. One that I bought a month ago thinking I would maybe make some mashed potatoes for my little one. But after a month, the potato I bought has grown what looks like another potato on top of itself. Ugh. So a little grossed out, I've thrown it all out, washed my hands as if I was Howard Hughes, and now finally sit down to watch the Viper playing as the Dravidians in yellow take on Vivi playing as the Incas in blue. Now, while the players heard their hurtables, explore their immediate surroundings, perhaps finding a couple of friends for their goats and try to get their butts up to feudal age ASAP. Why don't we take a look at the Civ match we'll be watching today. Now, the Dravidians are a civilization that likes to focus on their infantry. To start with, all of their barracks technologies are half price and all of their infantry units can be upgraded to ignore enemy armor essentially turning all Dravidian infantry units into Lithuanian Lechai, which is fantastic news for their unique unit, the Urumi Swordsman. This is a medium infantry unit that comes with a pretty big attack boost, plus 12 or plus 15, depending on whether you're working with the base or the elite model. And unlike the Custelier, this charge attack does trample damage. Now to support its infantry on the field of battle, all Dravidian siege units cost a third less wood, their cavalry also benefit from Woot's Steel, which is the name of the upgrade I just mentioned that turns their infantry into Lechai, and the cavalry also can be turned into Lechai by ignoring enemy armor, although keep in mind, Dravidian cavalry notoriously bad. Now their skirmishers, their elephant archers do attack 25% faster, and all of their elephant units can be upgraded to regenerate health, think Viking Berserkers. Now to help support their military, Dravidian fishermen do carry extra seafood. I am looking out on this uh, Las Vegas, Nevada style map. Oh, look at that. We do have a lake with some shore fish. So perhaps we will get to see some Dravidian fishermen carrying 15 extra fish on their way home to the market. And every time the Dravidians go up in age, they do get 200 wood for free, which does help in the early stages of the game when villager allocation building construction is incredibly important. Elephant gets a little stunned. Where the hell's the villager I'm chasing, he says as the villager runs into the town center. Or perhaps you can use your extra 200 wood to help train and build some of that discounted siege I was just mentioning. Now let's take a look at Vivi playing as the Incas in blue, the quintessential Age of Empires counter civilization. Is your opponent going cavalry, perhaps even elephants? Well, then you can rely on your first unique unit, the Kamayuk. This is a ranged infantry unit that carries a very long spear and comes with a massive bonus against all manner of four-legged beasts, elephants, cavalry, and even camels. Not to counter infantry, the Incas can rely on their other unique unit, the Slinger. This is an archer unit that comes with a pretty big attack bonus against infantry and which can be upgraded to get a small attack boost. Now, if your opponent goes archers, well, the Incas can rely on their skirmishers, which not only get access to all archery range, blacksmith, and university upgrades, but can also be upgraded to have no minimum range whatsoever, which does take away one of the big weaknesses of the skirmisher. I'm wondering, I was sorry, I started there for a second. I was wondering why the hell is the uh, goat going? Not exactly rage forest pulling three elephants at a time. I guess the goat's kind of there just a uh, bit of a perverted uh, goat, I guess, just wants to see the elephant die and die it does, and now he uh, <laughs> he's just standing on top of his dead body. In any event, to make the Incan army last a little bit longer on the battlefield, no, they don't take Viagra, but their Kamiuks, their Slingers, their Eagle Warriors can all be upgraded to get extra melee and pierce armor. And lastly, to support and help them build their military industrial complex to be as big and powerful as possible, all Incan military units cost less and less food as the game goes on, all the way from 10% cheaper in the Dark Age, in case uh, now that Vivi has built his barracks. There you go. We're seeing two militiamen. So they do not cost 60 food. They are 10% cheaper all the way up in terms of food count, I should uh, specify, all the way up to 25% cheaper in Imperial. The Incas, for you eagle-eyed watchers, if you notice, they do start the game with a free llama underneath the town center, which may not sound like much, but it does give you an extra unit to either explore the map with and, in addition, a little bit of extra free food. Now, Incan buildings do cost 15% less stone. Their houses support 10 population space instead of the usual five, which does free up a little bit of wood in the early stages of the game, perhaps in even in early feudal when some wood units come out. I'm looking at you spearmen. I'm looking at you archers and skirmishers having houses that double the population space compared to the normal house always helps you save even just a little bit of extra wood. 
And lastly, their villagers are harder to raid because starting in Castle Age, the Incan villagers do benefit from blacksmith upgrades. I should say infantry blacksmith upgrades. And by the way, BT dubs, take a look at the top right of your screen. You'll notice the Incas get all infantry blacksmith upgrades. These are the two civilizations we have before us as a vulture flies overhead, perhaps expecting the first kill of the game. Lately, the first kills have come later and later and in the game, uh, which I don't know what to make of it. For now, we're in the nine minute mark. Let's look at the HP. OK, some of these uh, some of these militias may not be making it home. Let's put it like that as both players now continue expanding their economy as there you go the viper gets the first kill first two kills of the game perhaps even first three he is already in feudal so we'll follow this chase and then we'll take a look at where the viper's base is one thing i should point out about this game this is uh, <laughs> oh you have to change directions even for a brief second it does make you slow down for just a, a split second vivi by the way did go up to feudal age a lot later than his opponent because he did train a few more villagers as I was about to say before we take a look at the base before the Viper now starts his aggression, this was a game out of a series of games played between these two players. I believe it was a show match, which I think are becoming more and more popular. I think Vivi himself put up uh, two or three hundred dollars. And this might have been a best of seven. Now, I can or rather I won't spoil anything. I, I honestly don't know. But I once I saw Dravidians and the Viper, I knew I would have to cast this game at least. I mean, if the game lasts five to ten minutes, you're probably never going to hear my voice. I'm just screaming into an echo chamber here of nothingness. But if it does go a little bit beyond that, we will see this game. I just wanted to cast this one because, the, again, the Viper and Dravidians with the whole controversy that Age of Empires, our community likes to delve into once in a while. Man, oh man, do we like our controversies and man, oh man, do we like to go down rabbit holes where players make their opinions known and then the community responds in any event the viper has a, a bit of a history with the dravidian civilization so i really wanted to take a look and see how he would perform against the incas which in all in all rights i mean the the slinger is just an absolute badass unit it comes with the same attack bonus of a plus 10 against infantry that a hand cannoneer comes with except you don't have to research chemistry and wait until imperial to get it uh, unless of course you're like the bohemians but you know, one out of 45 sieves doesn't warrant mentioning as he, he says as he mentions it. But I do expect to see some slingers if the Viper goes infantry, if he goes elephants, if he will, we'll see what the Viper decides to do. We've seen him absolutely uh, have so much fun with this civilization. For now, his archer lies dead. Looks like two kills for Vivi. Three kills evens it all up. And let's take a look at Vivi's bases. It looks like the Viper's army is now returning home. His militias are weak. His uh, archer units are a little afraid to be on their own. I don't see any reinforcements streaming forward. So a good time for us to lay take a look at the bases finally at the 14 minute mark. Primary gold on the attack path out in the open, but already forming part of the wall off for Vivi. Primary stone off to the side. Vivi has created a bit of an enclave for himself, which means he's left his primary resources inside and secondary resources all three of them outside, all three of them annoyingly placed in the very forward position. By the way, a very small map. And so the attack path between these two bases, with the exception of this one forest, is completely open. And this should lead to some good aggression here. Usually when the rush distance between the bases is so small, it's, it leads to a lot of early game aggression, which I guess in this game we did see usually, like I said, usually 13, 14, 15 minutes in is when we get the first kill. 15 minutes in, we've already got a total of eight kills. The Viper guns down two more skirmishers, takes the lead yet again. V villager kind of just watching it all happen. Oh, look at this. Primary gold, primary stone, nice and secure to the back. Additional gold safe to the back. And then a few extra resource patches, very exposed to the front. Where are these villagers going? The militia have now matured. They've seen some things. They are now men at arms and they are moving forward. Vivi is going eagles. A bold, bold choice against the Militia line, which comes with an Eagle Warrior attack bonus. Although, what the hell in this game doesn't come with an Eagle Warrior attack bonus? On the whole, the Viper's base, the better one, with the primary resources secure, extra gold to the back. He also has a forest to the back, which Vivi does not because he's already walled himself off. And now he is being tower dropped by the Viper who's brought forth. 
quite the interesting army here. We've got a few skirmishers embedded inside them are th what looks like three archers. Yeah, three archers, some men at arms, one of whom is uh, very, very weak. BB says, forget that noise. I'm just going to go on the offensive. Will he get the villager? Should get the villager. I mean, the Viper basically just gave him that villager for free by making her walk back towards the army, but Vivi, perhaps microing back home, is not paying attention. And so that villager survives. Power is up. Archery range is getting pressed into. And this is the moment when you see your opponent has seven men at arms that you really... Ooh, is this the first villager kill? Yeah, this is the first villager kill of the game. This is when you start thinking of uh, perhaps a second archery range to start pumping out some of those slingers I was mentioning, because again, a plus 10 attack bonus when you don't have to wait for Imperial is pretty big news, in my in my humble opinion. Okay, Villager dead on the Viper side as well, so Villager kills are even, but the Viper still leads eight kills to four. We'll see what Vivi can accomplish here. Probably not too much with just a few skirmishers who are missing every single javelin but no i was the yours truly was thinking about a second archery range vivi just lost his first and only archery range are the players banking any kind of resources not at the moment vivi has got 178 gold the viper's got 250 neither of them have any kind of food to write home about looks like of course absolutely nothing happening here as vivi's army has to retreat i'm surprised he's tethering the eagles to the skirmishers the Eagles move a lot faster than these skirmishers. And we'll see how much army escapes this kind of but not really quick desert chase that's unfolding before our very eyes. The Viper's Tower is still up, laming the primary gold. And this is where Vivi... Uh, things are not going to look very good for him because, again, secondary tertiary gold are outside the town settlement which means our Inca is mining no gold at all. What he does have is 16 villagers on stone. Tell me he's got a market up. No market. He does have a stone gate, though. HP is falling rapidly. But a tower should be able to shoo away. Isn't it funny how just a simple tower is enough to shoo away? The gate had 25 HP. He could have easily busted into here. Although, where would he go? with two towers maybe this corner here had he powered through maybe he would have lost one or two units looks like vivi's returned home with his expeditionary force they did manage to gun down a man at arms and now the eagles unencumbered by the slow moving javelin throwers called skirmishers are heading over to the other side of the wall off the other side of the world army counts are pretty ridiculous for uh 20 minutes in and uh feudal age although i say that the viper is going up to castle 21 to 16 with only 11 and 6 kills. Looks like the Viper did manage to get another villager. And now he's placing a tower even more laming of the gold, if that's possible, on a hill. It's going to be very annoying. Two eagles look like they tried to go through the town center and paid the price for it. And oh, huh? did he just trap these eagles with a house? Oh my god. <laughs> well, the Viper. The first Age of Empires player to try to domesticate the wild eagle has cornered three of them in here. Uh, okay, now he's bringing some men-at-arms. Maybe not. I don't know if two men-at-arms are enough to kill three eagles. Ooh, but Vivi is bringing a relief column here. Ten skirmishers. Their HP is down half. They should be able to take on these men-at-arms, though. This is still a good fight for the uh, skirmishers as long as they can keep moving. I believe the men-at-arms... Do move slower than one tile per second, while the skirmishers move a little tiny bit faster. But they do have that minimum range, so if the Viper can close, he may kill one. I don't even know if he's going to kill one, to be honest. Looks like the Viper's main army is still posturing in front of Vivi's base. And now the Viper's in Castle Vivi a minute and 15 seconds away. Does manage to gun down an archer unit... Two men at arms, so not a terrible loss there for, uh, or rather, not a terrible situation so far for our Inca, who, with this group of now nine skirmishers, ooh, but the villagers, the villagers move forward as well. They've had enough. And now, without the skirmishers, these eagles are exposed to any kind of range unit. Look at the slew of upgrades that we're getting for the Viper. He is definitely going infantry with elite skirmisher support, second town center. Nicely placed on the gold. 
The Viper deletes his lumber camp, brings in a fresh recruit long swordsman. Now the Eagle bonus jumps up to a plus six, and he is just going to have an absolute field day. This is like a f grown man fighting three toddlers. Now the Viper, interestingly, is now trapped his own unit inside here and is going to have to either delete the unit, delete the palisade that's on fire, if he can even click it, or delete one of his houses. Long Sportsmen do catch up. What's their movement speed? A little bit quicker, 10% quicker than their former variant. And now the Viper. I mean, he's seen all of the resources outside of the town center. Vivi has access to almost nothing. He does manage to place a castle, but the Viper annoyingly enters into the dead space. That being said, look at Arinka. Two extra town centers. The Viper just getting his third up as well. Not a lot of good locations, by the way, on this map for town centers to hit multiple resources at once. Even this hill is so annoyingly and perfectly placed to stop a town center from going up there. Viper starting to get more and more villager kills. Five in total, but that's basically all she wrote for these two guys. As a tower and a town center. <laughs> Gamma Ukes are out. All right. Our Inca, having seen the heavy infantry play, decides to go Kamayuk. Now, I wonder if he's going to try to rely on the stackability of the units. Like I said, if you see that your opponent is going heavy on infantry, the Incas very much can rely on their slinger, a fourth town center for our Dravidian. Okay, players have kind of disengaged from one another. Now, the annoying thing about the ranged melee units like the Kamayuk, like Step Lancers, etc., if you don't micro them properly, if you just right click on a tower, because they have one range, the tower can attack them. Because uh, even missing the murder holes upgrade with this yellow line here, they can reach because of the range. So, the Vivi had to very carefully right click somewhere here with this one Kamayuk so that he would close in on the tower and then attack it. And oh, he's going to discover that his town center cannot be placed there. He doesn't know what to do. So he's building a house. He's figuring things out. Perhaps trying to get an even bigger army in place. But let's take a look at what the players are doing. Our Incan base is just chock full of towers all of a sudden. Three towers. He's got the castle continually pumping out Kamiuks. Of course, right as I say that, he stops. Looks like there is a yellow monk. There he is. He's going to try to convert one of these Kamiuks. Probably will get it. Not exactly the quickest on their feet are the Kamiuks. Does get it. Will he get reconverted? Yep. <laughs> Give me back my shit, says Vivi. Unfortunately, he does lose a monk. So 100 gold there being lost. As more and more Kamiuks join Siege Workshop. Viper is dropping a castle up here. He's going to try to lean this gold as well. That's so annoying. He is absolutely pressing on all of the correct locations to try to lame as much as possible. I'm not too sure what the hell the point of these villagers attacking the tower is when you've already got a battering ram en route. Why are you sending your army here? They're just taking unnecessary HP poking. There you go. Now the primary gold finally secured at the 31 minute mark of the game. The Viper is here. He's got one more villager than his opponent. He's got three more army count. Scores are less than 10% apart. This is absolutely an epic close game. Vivi, no! <laughs> he thinks he can get his castle up before his opponent. The Viper's castle is already two-thirds complete. Oh, the blocking house falls and the castle gets canceled as well. Now, remember, the Incas do only need, uh, what the hell is 85%? of 650 stone what's 65 let's round it up to 100 discount so they only need 550 stone because all of their structures cost 15 percent less stone i'm looking at you town centers castles towers all of it and where the hell is our inca going okay loses another kamayuk loses two kamayuks okay there's an archery range how many just the one oh no I, I honestly don't know what the hell the, what was going on here. Did Vivi think that he was playing as the Spanish? Did he think he had supremacy villagers? I mean, they do benefit from blacksmith upgrades, but 
at the moment, uh, he's got no Castle Age Blacksmith upgrades. So they're stuck at the 3 plus 1 attack. Which I guess is not terrible for a villager, but again, I'm not too sure what the hell is going on here. His goal to the top has been lamed. You still have this goal here. Why are your villagers all at the top left? Confusing movement of civilian population out of our blue player, who again is just on move command. Use your stack ability. The Kamayuk, the weaker unit with a base attack of a 7 compared to a base attack of a 9. But he does stack. And finally, some Slingers have joined in. Ooh, okay, they are stacked. But now there's crossbows as well. What's the armor on the uh, Kamuk? Only one. Oh, no. The Incan army is about to get slaughtered. Ah, uh, <laughs> what? Oh, well, there you go. Army composition, army composition, army composition. Dear Lord. Why did he not mix in some more slingers? How many archery ranges did he die with? Wow. I mean, uh, okay, a relatively short game, but one incredibly full of action, actually. Uh, more so than most games at the 35-minute mark, even though the kill count's sub-100 on the whole. The Viper just pressing on all the right places from the very beginning. There was a time when Vivi was in Feudal Age, and he needed gold the most, where he didn't have access to any gold because the Viper and his scouting revealed that the primary gold was so easily lamed, especially since Vivi made it part of his wall off, which makes it always a susceptible resource to lame. And then he's had his secondary and tertiary golds outside of his settlement. And his stone, forget about the stone, he mined out his primary here. But who needs stone in feudal age? I guess Vivi. Needed <laughs> stone in feudal age to sell, to get gold, to buy food, to go up to castle. And he just did not put enough pressure on the Viper, which means the Viper dictated the pace of the game. And when you let the Viper dictate the pace of the game, this is what happens. You have a big fat castle on one gold patch. You have 19 villagers. I don't even know if they all fit into this Tetris square shaped piece of gold. And then you only have it. The, what was it? The 31, 30 minute mark of the game. You're finally mining your primary gold, but look at how crappy this area is. There's a house blocking a little path here. Wow, the Viper just again putting like a uh, like a reflexologist. He's just putting the pressure on at all the right spots. And I don't know what the hell Vivi was doing with that move out of villagers. Losing the stone here with the castle was terrible. The Urumis are out. Do yourself a favor. After you watch this video, go on to YouTube because I, I know you're going to be on YouTube because you're watching this video. And go on YouTube and search Urumi Swordsman and, and you'll see exactly why they have trample damage. Where is it? Area of effect 0 0.8. Not the usual 0 0.5, 0 0.8 tiles. Charge attack of a 12 and a 24 second recharge time, which I believe lowers to 20 seconds with the elite. But do yourself a favor, go on YouTube, look up the Urumi Swordsman. It is an incredibly cool thing to see in real life. But ultimately, I, I really do want to see just this last battle one more time. I wonder why BB took such a terrible engagement. Looks like he had a whole bunch of Kamiyukes. He has more HP. No, I'm looking at the Viper. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, he's got 12 Kamiyukes. He's fighting two converted Kamiyukes, five archers, which in 11 seconds are going to be crossbows. So I'm surprised, number one, the Viper took this engagement 11 seconds earlier than he needed to. Okay, the Kamiyuks easily pick off. This is what happens when you, you have an ar army with a unit that has range. You can pick off units as they retreat. Okay, a second Slinger comes on. By the way, look at this. Plus 10 attack bonus against infantry in Castle Age is pretty damn big news. Again, that's like a uh, that's a hand cannoneer level attack bonus. And you don't have to wait till Imperial. It just shows you how powerful this Slinger is, even though it attacks on a base of a four. Who cares? Is that bonus damage. So it kind of looks like Vivi's taking a pretty decent fight here. But the crossbows, of course, going straight for the slingers. Why the hell wouldn't they? That's the big threat. And then the Viper just surrounds the Kamiuk, so their stack ability means nothing. He has just completely surrounded them. They cannot stack. I mean, they... Let me put it like this. They could have stacked, 
but they'd have to attack into one direction, left or right, not both. And it looks like Vivi's army was attacking into both directions. So a few interesting choice maneuvers out of both players, but the Viper just showing us an absolute clinic onto how, or rather about how to abuse your opponent's shitty map spawn. And honestly, Vivi, kudos to him for surviving 35 minutes with no primary gold and no gold whatsoever for like half an hour. <laughs> so kudos to Fifi for surviving and kudos to the Viper for showing us, hey, when you, number one, your, yours truly, Isaac, Cast of Empires, is always yammering on about scouting and map vision and why information is power and all of that good old stuff. This game really showed us why, number one. Number two, when you know where your opponent's weak spots are, and especially if you see he's hiding behind his walls in a very condensed, very small little settlement here, you go forward and you press, and you press until it hurts, and then when it hurts, you press even more with a tower, two towers, a castle, and wow, the Viper just again putting on an absolute perfect clinic for us. A, a very instructional game out of him. 24 longswordsmen, 15 Kamuks. Again, the Kamuks should have done a bit better, but Vivi let himself get surrounded. So on a macro level, kind of sucked that he had all his resources outside his town settlement. On a micro level, he just took an absolute terrible engagement. Would have loved to see a few more slingers. I think if he had maybe three, four, five more slingers, I don't think the Viper would have taken this battle. Even with crossbows that outrange the slingers, I believe. Seven range to, what were they? Oh my God, how long ago did they die? Seven range to six. But if, if Vivi had just four or five more slingers here, that's literally one-shotting these long swordsmen. You one-shot the long swordsmen, your Kamiuk's body block against everything else, and look at how cool this is, this unit attacking behind. This is just a clear-cut example of stack ability and the ranged melee attack. Let's take a look at the stats. Overall, a very interesting, even though it was short, like I said, it felt a lot longer. It felt like there was a lot more action. I'm honestly in shock that Vivi's economy is only 15% smaller than his opponent. Even though the Viper has all resources ahead, just a tiny bit more wood, a tiny bit more food, a lot more gold. There's the, your, your entire difference here is the gold, which is funny because the Viper is not really training very gold intensive units here, right? What he is doing is getting upgrades on them. Well, actually not even that. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. The monks, I guess, is what got uh, where all the gold went. But this is just unacceptable. 2,700 extra gold. All the other three resources are pretty much identical. And the Viper does also have two relics. Five conversions out of 44 is more than 10% of the Incan army becoming uh, Dravidian. Buildings raises both of them 30, uh, or rather three apiece. Not terrible at all. And at the end of the day, I don't think this is an accurate... Yeah, sorry. Oh my god, you know what? I'm so sorry. I looked at the stats. I looked at the stats before the game was over. 24 to 15 PKPM beginning PKPM. This is not good. Right at the beginning of the game. And the economies now are a little bit different. Still about 15 to 20%. Which, again, for, for a player that didn't have gold for about 20 minutes, I, I'm surprised at that. Five conversions out of 45 is still more than 10%. Buildings raise is still the same. Kill count, on the whole, not the highest. The Viper managing to kill seven villagers to two. But, you know, some games... I know, like, for example, uh, AC Dragon Rider, you like to see games where the players just build these massive armies and then bash them into each other. There are other games when there's, like, five, you know, on the left side of your screen, on the right side of your screen, you'll see picture in picture, about a thousand of them. There's multi-pronged action. And then there are other games that are just like this, where you just abuse your opponent's starting resources. And that's exactly what the Viper did, and that's exactly what Vivi let him do. More importantly, Vivi almost didn't contest anything here. He spent his entire time trying to get things done here. The Viper got a few pet eagles for his troubles. I don't even know how the hell his swordman got out of here. This is still fully walled off, and that palisade is still there on fire. Did he just delete the, the unit that was in there? Not too sure. But in any event, an absolute epic lesson. Also, an important lesson to learn, if your unit stacks... Make sure they all stack in the same direction. Don't take a fight with half of them fighting left, half of them fighting right. 
And always, always, if your opponent is going infantry, add as many slingers as possible, even though it did kind of suck that he's lo he lost his first archery range. Uh, you know, he did have enough wood for another one. He did have enough wood, I think, for five more slingers. I think they're like 40 wood, 40 gold. So Vivi could have waited a little bit. I think maybe he moved, perhaps felt under pressure with so many forward villagers, but that's exactly what the Viper was hoping for. Again, I don't want to beat a dead horse. An absolute fun game, even though it wasn't the longest, and ultimately it is the Viper with the strategic placement of static offensive structures and applying the pressure, taking the good fight, who takes the W, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.